I think there is a wider issue with the mental health nursing about uh, what the government call it parity of esteem, but it's trying to ensure that we treat mental health as equally as we do physical health. And people often call the mental health services Cinderella services, and I think that's still true. Um, they don't seem to get the, the regards and the, the esteem that, that other services seem to do. I think this um, has taken too long to come actually because I think it's one of the best ideas because we're dealing with one person and this person can be mentally ill as well as physically unwell and so if we integrate this system that, met, that makes it easier to look after this person. Speaking as a mental health nurse I'd be protective over um, mental health as a specialism in nursing and the reason I say that is I think that there are very specific um, skills, attributes, um, there's specific knowledge associated with mental health nursing and I think if nursing was to be merged and become nursing then those, those aspects would be diluted. Actually in the country I trained you couldn't be a mental health nurse without being a, um, you couldn't be a mental health nurse without being a general nurse. You have to be a general nurse to go into any other specialist area and it just helped that um, the one nurse could look after both the mental health of the physically ill patient. I think it's actually an advantage and I found it helpful as I've practiced in both areas. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily fault the fact that it hasn't been done before now but now that the awareness is there I know for certain that People who are doing mental health training or even nursing training generally now have been <coughs> asked to have some shift or some sort of experience in the alternative or practice. We do a fair amount of physical health care in the work that we do on the unit that I work on. Um, and I, I think if I look back on the training that I had, we did a bit, but actually I would have appreciated much more in-depth training and um, to really equip us for the work that we do. There's a lot of literature and a lot of evidence that says that people with um, severe and enduring mental illnesses are likely to have more long-term physical health conditions um, and die earlier, in fact. It's very common that uh, they could present with symptoms that you'd think are mental health, but actually it's because they are physically unwell or they might present with some physical problems, but they ha also have mental health problems. And this goes for all mentally unwell people. And at times it's very difficult because they can't explain themselves. So you can easily miss the other symptoms. You can just see maybe the confusion. You can see that they're just very sleepy or anything. You, you don't really relate to any physical condition if you don't have that expertise. I understand and appreciate that sometimes physical health conditions can manifest more clearly. They seem more obvious to people and so we think they take, sometimes we might think they take priority. Sometimes the, it might seem that that treatment is going to be the thing that really helps people recover but we can't ignore the impact of mental illness. Uh, and, and Treating both is, is clearly got to be the best way and, and actually the most financially um, viable way. It's taken a, a long time for society to actually recognise the, how prevalent mental health conditions are but also the effect it has on the individual and society and I think it's only recently in the last 10 or 20 years that we've begun to grapple with that and deal with it. So hopefully in 20 years time we won't be talking about it being a Cinderella service but we'll have to wait and see.